but we should probably get started a couple minutes late. <laughs> so, welcome everybody. We want to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Anybody feel the need to leave? Feel free. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't believe we have any guests, anyone online. I see Justin is on. Hey, everybody. How are you? Hey, Justin. Uh, and Sorry, I have to leave early tonight for my son's baseball game. I'll probably have to bounce out at quarter after five. <laughs> Okay, just a reminder, uh, obviously the Zoom etiquette when we shuffle our papers, they pick up everything here. So. Um, I don't think we have anything further on our continued organizational meeting other than, can we close our continued organizational meeting? It's just standing like a moment. It's just always on there, okay. Um, privilege of the floor, anybody wanna speak? I think we're good. Shauna, anything from the development office you wanna report? Um, am I on? Am I muted? I can't see. Oh, I'm on. We can hear you. Oh, hi everybody. Hi, Shauna. Hi. Um, I don't have anything. We are definitely. We have a few applications coming your way. Uh, next month, one on uh, a few on Westlake Road. Um, but uh, we're just we're busy. Um, in a good way. And um, just the FYI that Michelle is now um, permanently over in the assessor's office. Our new assessor has started. Um, so she is assisting Paul. Um, so Allie and Kelly are the new contacts up front. I mean, obviously I am as well, but I just wanted to let everybody know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. down here. Okay. Uh, we don't have any referrals from the town board at this time. Any notes from CIC or ordinance that anybody's aware of? CIC, we, we had the air committee yeah. give us the report. Because mm -hmm. um, I think each, each time we meet, it's a new committee generally mm -hmm. that's filling us in on what's happening. I forget if it was at that one or at ordinance. They, where they were discussing solar panels and solar policy. Was that at ordinance? Somewhat. They were discussing it at CIC a little. Yeah. So I think they are still talking about mm -hmm. solar ordinances and such. So. The planning board is talking about it. And that's a topic that they've, that's one of their goals for 2022 is to, to at least have some recommendations on updating our solar ordinance. So there actually was quite a bit of discussion um, at the CIC meeting because uh, Bob DiCarlo was there. We were talking about ag and it really affects or can affect ag land. Mm -hmm. um, one of my proposals for the next year's budget is gonna be an entire rewrite of our solar. Um, I think it's so important that we probably should have a consultant help us with it. So um, that is definitely on our radar. I feel like we should probably create a group, like a working group uh, from ag, from ECB, from the planning and ZBA and development that's all discussing it together. But yeah, I'd be uh, that could be interesting. Um, and, and maybe it's a discussion. Um, one of my items on the town, my town board report this month was the joint meeting that we're having with town board, zoning board, planning board, and ECB mm -hmm. in June, um, which we haven't had in a long time. So maybe that is a good topic for that meeting, just to bring it up. Mm -hmm. What's the date of that again, Sean? Uh, June 6th. And I, as I was typing it tonight or before I left work, um i was thinking i wonder if i've told the ecb about that i don't think we have no yeah so. so we are scheduling a joint meeting again it would be with the town board the planning board zoning board and your board um at onanda we thought the weather would be great for that so we reserved crouch hall and um i will give you more details but if you could at least get that on your radar that would be great Okay, that's June 6th, so yes. month from tomorrow. Everybody. Was there a tentative time for that, Shauna? Uh, I believe six o'clock, Kim. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
What happens if we can't make that meeting? We'll miss you. Wait, I missed it. What was that? He's going to Alaska. She's yeah, on. I want to see those glaciers right. before they're gone. That's like my bucket list item there. So um, you are excused from that meeting. <laughs> I will miss it though. I'm very sad that I'm going to be more time with you guys. <laughs> Uh, I might you can zoom in. Plane, though, like, so I don't, I don't think that they'll let me do that on airport, though, sadly. <laughs> okay, so I think, can we move on to the PRC? Or um, I've seen the note here on the referral from Ordinance Committee. Um, I'm wondering, Sean, I, I, I'm not sure everyone knows um, what's going on with the Ordinance Committee and what's occurred, um, but it might be a moment. I think, yeah, I was, Adeline, maybe, I thought maybe, well, I'm hoping that everybody knows what's happened. Um, yeah. I'll let you share that if, if you feel comfortable. Yes, that's a town board member, um, Gary Davis, who was in charge of the ordinance committee, passed away yesterday. Oh, oh no. no. Um, so we were giving his family some time to share that. Um, but um, he, he'd had some illness issues leading up to it, but it was quite a shock um, to have that happen. So. Um, so there'll be obviously a period of transition and things happening. And right. And so he and I worked really, thing. we worked closely together on ordinance, he and I, and Kim too. Um, so yeah, we'll, I, we haven't even discussed no. anything related to it, but, um, yeah, he was, he was an amazing human. I really enjoyed working with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very caring, thoughtful man. So definitely a big loss for our town so but i figured we might as well <laughs> let some folks know so so if uh ordinance will probably take a little while to sort of heal from that um uh, going forward so so moving on from that i'm sorry to just go right into but um we have some prc referrals here um were was anyone able to go out and visit any of the properties at all <coughs> in the committee no, but I also had a question. I know you guys got lanyards last, like a mm -hmm. couple months ago. Yeah. I did not get one, so oh, I don't yeah, know if I'm know. allowed to even go out there without yeah. like something oh, to show. Oh, you are like that, absolutely. But, you, are. So, but you, you can go you out. One. Well, um, Kim, can you remind me to get a lanyard made for her, please? I will. Thank mm -hmm. you. I mean, I will show up at people's doors. So those are new. Those are new. Okay. Yeah. So right. And I think Justin's, Justin, I'm going to mail Yeah, I forgot, I forgot to pick it up when I was down there last yeah. time. Sorry. I I'll, don't I'll make even know effort. what you look like. So um, I'm going to mail it. <laughs> That's a it. good thing. No, I'll stop in uh, at some, some point this week. Uh, well, not this week, probably next week and grab okay. it. Sorry okay. for my tardiness on that. That's okay. Well, that's all right. So... Okay, so um, this one is, I believe we've been reviewing this for a number of years now, the property at 5100 and 5150 Bristol Road. Mm -hmm. It's kind of coming right. off behind, the, between the hammocks and the city line there kind of thing is my understanding. So, yeah. yeah, I sent an email out today um, to the yeah. board, just as a kind of refresher that nothing has changed. This application, this really all it is is a lapse of approval time. They didn't get their plans in for final signature. They don't have their conservation easement management plan done or their easements done. Um, and time just ran out. I mean, we do, uh, approvals do not go on in perpetuity. So um, that's where we're at. It's literally a mirror resubmission of what you've reviewed in the past. If that's If that's helpful to the board knowing that. Yes, that's, I thought that was the same thing that we looked at several times. I yeah. didn't uh, uh, refresh my memory. Who who is responsible for maintaining the open space in these uh, these conservation easements? Well, this is different in that it's the easements will be given to the town, so really nothing is to happen in them. Um, and the maintenance or are you saying kind of the 
watchdog would be us if oh, that's what you mean, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I mean that's it it's, sounds good, but it's it's difficult to to uh enforce. Chris has a hard time enforcing that because we don't I mean we don't always know what's going on unless a neighbor complains. Mm -hmm. You know, if trees are taken down. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's forever wild. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's no longer, sorry, just trying to refresh my memory. It's no longer associated, I guess, with that last parcel at the end there that was gonna have the responsibility or I guess that the last that parcel will be the conservation piece in mm -hmm. the back. Is that what you mean, Justin? Yeah, it was connected. To, uh, I, I believe the homeowner, or, or maybe it was the builder, was going to have a house there at the, all the way at the end, and they were somehow. I, I think this got worked through in one of the revisions we had, of like. Yeah, the, it okay. did. So that's going to be the piece that's the the conserved land is in the back. Kim, could you pull the plan up, if you don't mind? There's one that shows the whole layout. There you go. That one? There. Yep. Ooh. So if you see, if you can see. Yeah, that's good. Well, that doesn't that's show. Like the whole you. thing. Go up one. Yeah. No, if you can go up one. One has the whole piece. There you go. Yes. So the open space is behind lot 10. Mm -hmm. But there's an area that kind of flanks eight and not uh, eight, not eight, uh, nine and ten. That's also preserved. It's a pretty narrow lot. All those have driveways coming off that circle, correct? Those, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. deep in ones there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they're not flag lots then, Shauna? I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Adelaide? That, that furthest one to the right in the picture we're looking at there, that's not a flag lot at all? The <laughs> lot, yeah, you, you can, but lot 10 well so here's the deal with this this one because it's a conservation subdivision the applicant so they kind of they get a little bit extra in that we can't the board waived certain lot size requirements in lieu of the open space so it is a little bit so it's not a flag lot but um well it kind of looks like one but you know yeah. what I'm saying? That there, it, it's Ooh, like a give and take <laughs> of these easements. Okay. Does anybody have any comments or concerns about it? And it looks pretty unchanged from yeah. when we looked yeah. at it last yeah. time. It just I didn't think it all. need another. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, you know, the documentation on the easements is interesting to read. They, yeah. they talk about you can have teepees and yurts, you know, <laughs> oh, that's which, interesting. Which, are, which do not have a foundation. I didn't pick up on yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Go glamping in our conservation. Yeah, exactly. so. How wide is that at the at Bristol Road there, the opening there? Can anybody read it? I can't. Remember. Well, you can zoom in on it. Well, lot one is 138 feet across, so I bet it's pushing 300 feet. Okay. Ish. I mean, without a scale. <coughs> All right, cool. <coughs> well, if we don't have any changes or anything, then I don't think we need to. <laughs> And keep discussing and we can move uh, on to the next one if everybody's everyone all right with that yes yeah. yes okay. so so do we have a recommendation yeah. 
Well, I think that whatever we said about it before would probably still stand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no additions to it. Yeah, just no, please right. refer no. to it. Yeah. Anybody that was before I was on the board, does anybody know what month that was by any chance? No, uh, it'll be in the records. So. Yeah. I, I also have it in the file um, and I sent it. I, it's, I have everything that, that we need, Adeline. Okay, good. Yeah, because it was a part of the conditions of approval. So mm -hmm. we've got all that. Okay, so I would just say refer to our private previous recommendations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on to 3542 Sandy Beach Drive, which once poor Kimberly, who has to write everything and look everything up. Okay. <laughs> she a great job. That one up for us. We appreciate <laughs> it. It's a good thing. She's so popular. Yeah. Sandy Beach. Yeah. You might already had it ready to go. Look you might that. want to pick tometry on this one. That might be helpful. You yeah. mean Encore? Yes, Encore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Encore. Nope, that's okay. A, a part of which is spectrometry. Yeah, Sorry about that. that's where I find spectrometry. I just yeah. assume everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Now, has this anyone help. been out to this one? I, I know you have, I'm sure, but anyone else <laughs> in the committee been out to this one at all? <laughs> Or Justin, I don't know if you had an opportunity to go out there either. We we were not the original designers of the project, okay. but we were hired to come along and help come up with a solution mm -hmm. to uh, for the owner to establish a place to park okay. mm -hmm. and a type of surface upon which to park. Okay. So did, did another planner subsequently come in and a uh, Hamlin architecture worked on the project and uh, suggestions were by them and um, we did the existing conditions before they started to design. Um, and then it just kind of went from there. Oh, well, look, it's a sandy beach. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when we looked at the last sandy beach. Right, right. I just, uh, lots of sure. narrow. Yeah, they, they always are. Yeah. 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 We might even help um, Kim to even zoom in a little bit more, just so you can see the pavement and stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of pavement. So that house looks like it's under construction in that picture. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Exposed beams and everything. It does look that way. I think they did an addition because Hanlon is an architect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So any concerns on this one? Obviously the asphaltic coverage is a concern. And I know there'd been discussion in, uh, was it the PRC where they were discussing the flooding that occurred on the property or? Mm -hmm. Were they not supposed to remove some of that asphalt? That's what so, yeah, so here's what happened. They were granted a variance for lot coverage with the condition that they remove some of the existing asphalt to get to that variance that they requested. They did not remove the asphalt and they ended up putting more in. Mm -hmm. um, Chris has been working very hard with this applicant to try to remedy this situation. And because he does not like to issue violations, that's the, the last resort. So that's where we're at here. Um, the This application kind of stays the violation in that it won't go to court while all the boards are reviewing uh, the new proposal. Um, so the applicant is in violation of their site plan approval that's really why you're seeing it again. So now they're asking for increased lot coverage for not only for the asphalt they didn't take out, but for the asphalt that they put in. What was now, their rationale for not removing the asphalt that they uh, removed? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. What, what, would, what did they propose as a, an alternative surface instead of the asphalt? What were they originally supposed to do? Um, I, it was supposed to be grass. Just, oh, okay. It's going to remove oh. the asphalt and nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No others. Okay. Right. So just to confirm the 
the house is on the lakeside here and across from that asphalt is a parking or excuse me a garage mm -hmm. correct a detached garage mm -hmm. so they have the detached garage and then the asphaltic area basically entirely covering everything between the house and the detached garage is that correct that is correct and is that access to i mean where actually is sandy beach drive on that and does it continue right in front of the garage to the next property correct and then that's the last property on on the road right because you the tree kind of shadows it but you can keep driving down and i yeah. think i think that's the very is three five four six could you scroll up a little bit kim i just can't Yeah, I think that, that although I think, yeah, maybe three, five, four, eight. That might, that access to three, five, four, six might be, I think, I think Batistis are the end of the road. Mm -hmm. it, it might help to look at a previous um, imagery that might help to see. Go back in time there. Yeah, go back in time to see maybe prior to when the Batistis purchased the property to see what the pavement looked like. Because I think they I think they became ownership in like maybe 20, maybe. Mm -hmm. So they bought a situation, I think, and then oh, yeah. they had to, oh, yeah. then they That's added on to it. Mm -hmm. They added on the house too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But that's that helps you, you know. Sure. Yes, it does. Trying to figure out. So looks like he was doing a little jag the road there before. Was the road jagging around the court? Is that what's happening there? Dragging around a tree or something? I think Shauna said she thinks it might be the end. It's the end of Sandy Beach Drive yeah. right there. That's the end. If we hit, if you hit uh, pictometry, we could get a better angle. What? But the house to the south of them is is that is there access to their home from Sandy Beach Drive or from East Lake Road? Which is pictometry to? I oh, you know, yeah. don't know. Which is and the pictometry button? If you can, I share my screen. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Was it three five four two Sandy Beach? Yeah. I think I'm co-host. Yes, you are. Okay. You're good. You can... Do the sorry the asphalt sketches that the, that we have um, listed on there is that kind of showing what it was prior to what we're seeing? That's on, what I'm wondering. Yeah. Area, no. Yeah, you've got. Pat, does that house stop? For some it? reason, I can't. I believe they come off of East Lake. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure. Yeah. Hold on a second. I'm just gonna pull up Encore. But she can get a better angle. <laughs> yeah. When she goes into the geometry. Sounds rather like one of those better to ask forgiveness than permission. Yeah. I think that's what's yeah. happening anyway. Um, and then get sued. Right. So can we say they need to remove the asphalt? Absolutely. Okay. I think we should say. <laughs> yes, I think so too. Or we can also see it what is what is as a proposed solution to just like what what was the engineer designed for that section they designed some i think a water retention underneath a um, pervious pavement mm -hmm. section to help in that situation for the sake of drainage yeah i believe that's the plan we brought in because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they want to tear out what's there and then replace because it he, with he wants stuff. to be able to park mm -hmm. but if, he, if the pavement weren't there then it would be grass and then however so it is to park the on previous, yeah there was a design by the engineer to do that to do that so, but the, the, the town doesn't necessarily uh count um the pervious as a like a credit yeah. for lack of a better word well, they did with but the it's other. a solution they did with the other they had oh that's a beautiful yeah. picture there we go there you go that's nice that is march 30th of last year Mm -hmm. So it's under construction. Well, and, that, and they have a garage. They that's do. what I'm confused. Right, about. that's what I was gonna say. They have. Mm -hmm. Let's turn it here. 
That's a great view. Oh, wow. Two door garage and space mm -hmm. next to it. Yeah. So then everything on the house side was not intended to be there. Is that correct? Well, and also look at the pavement compared to the neighbors. Yeah. I mean, it, that's a huge change from what the neighbors have in there. That's a lot of concrete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a view kind of from looking, say we were hovering over it on the lake side. Is the house to the south of them in the town of Canandaigua still? Or is that Gorham? Kim, can you click on your pictometry, click on that lot and see where it is? It'll say. Oh, yeah, OK. Just second. Because they have a lot of There's a lot of pavement to the south, yes. Yeah, that's why I'm wondering if that's in the town of Gorham. Or town of Canada. In a considerable amount, um, a considerable, yeah, considerable amount to the drive also. Yeah. There's a lot of pavement. I, I think you have to stop sharing for me to not able to. I can look it up on my phone. You can talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Do you know what this underground storage is supposed to be in this? It's case? to help for the drainage, okay. just so, so that when there's runoff, it'll be hot, water. and then it will. Or, do I don't know if it goes water. into. I was going to say, so close to the water table there, yeah. how much storage are they getting? I think it's just to give it a chance to it's, absorb. It's more to, yeah, yeah. There we go. Let it settle in. I got it. looks from the plans, it's four inch perforated HDPE piping that's supposed to be run underneath the porous asphalt part. Mm -hmm. So the town of Candega. So, yep. Town of Candega. Yeah, it is Candega. And the other one's also town of Candega, correct? South of it. We're wondering no, if that's no Candega. I think it is. Just go well, down, look where they boat. Down That'll a little tell bit. you an RB. The, 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 See the little bar? Oh, there we go. Keep going. Town of Canada. Town of Canada. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it is in the town. Just checking. Yeah, a lot of pavement. Ten is that tennis court? No, it's just a driveway. I mean, okay. let's be clear here. This is just an applicant that doesn't yeah. want to comply with the regulations. I mean, mm -hmm. let's just say what it is. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get out of their violation by coming back for more impervious coverage. So I guess, I mean, that's where we're at. So there was no, no proposed mediation uh, of this uh, other than asking for uh, an increased variance. <laughs> right, so we asked them, please take out the asphalt that was part of the condition of your approval right. um, for your increased coverage and they refuse to do so. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it just made the problem more expensive. <laughs> I find it hard to be very sympathetic about that. No. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I'm, it's, I generally am not that pointed in when I say things like this, but I just feel I've just, I've read the file and I just, there's, there is absolutely no hardship. That's what we look at for granting variances. And I, there isn't one here. It's a self-created hardship right, if, right. if there is one. Yeah. Yeah, especially in that area that's already full of variances. Uh, yeah. It seems crazy to go further. Well, and it sets a precedent that we do not want set. So right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Is there a way to know what, what kind of surface the parking area is on the north and the south? On the south side, you see the single car is across the road. On the north side, it's abutting that, that site that we're looking at right now. Are those both impervious concrete as well? Is this a, a case of, hey, my neighbor has it, so I should too? Or That's is, why. is that is that gravel? or? I don't, it's probably... I don't know how you would know if it's pervious. Right. We would have to look at the plans, but regardless of whether it's pervious or impervious, it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In our town code as a crime. Yeah. 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 So 
I don't know, as a non-member and new person here, <laughs> what, what recommendations well, do we make? Just say no. I would recommend <laughs> that the town adhere to their previous uh, conditions. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Remove the asphalt as stated in their previous variance that they yes. were supposed to <laughs> follow. <laughs> As you said, we don't want people to think that they can just get away with making something like this happen, especially this close to the lake. So they were asked to remove asphalt in condition of them being allowed to build the addition. Is that what, or the asphalt that wasn't is, in That's there. correct. Okay. No, that's correct, Adeline. Okay. Yeah. That was part of their approval. And, and they do have a place to park in the garage right across. Two, car so, two places to park in the yeah, garage. Two, two places. <laughs> and there seems to be like a little area right next to the garage as well. They could yeah. park if they really wanted. Well, and if it's the end of the road, they can actually just park their car in the road too. If it's yeah. not other than winter time. So. Sorry, was there any additional discussion, I guess, on making this a separate zoning area? I mean, this is kind of now we're seeing, I guess, the fruits of this somewhat overdevelopment of this area, and you know, it might require that additional step, so that you know everything just doesn't become a violation. I guess in the end, right? And Gary wrote up some really good and and very intuitive and thoughtful narrative about that. And the process would be to for this board to come up with something that you all agree on and then send it over or present it to the ordinance committee for them to take a look at, send it to the planning board. The ordinance committee would then send it to the planning board, the zoning board, before it went to the town board to make some permanent changes. Did I share that with the rest of you? Like, I did not say I don't it. think so. No. Okay. no, I think you just sent it to me I and- you know, Okay, yeah. So are we talking about zoning changes or what are you yes. specifically referring to? Okay. Specifically to this area. And what, what's the adjoining area? Uh, uh, to um, Paticiana, isn't it Paticiana? North of uh, Poplar? Is it Poplar over uh, there? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I'll I'll, uh, I'll share that with others and maybe we can put it on the agenda for next next meeting. And, and a lot of it was what Sarah Linda had, had stated previously actually next one would be awesome because we'd be meeting with other groups as well too so mm -hmm. right yeah i think you mean otishiana that's on the south of sandy beach so okay so. yeah this just seems moving forward like if if we get to that point where it could be rezoned its own thing that maybe in the future you know any pavement in the area will be um pervious pavement or anything like that mm -hmm. basically would be a requirement for these approvals, I mean, it'll, it'll definitely alleviate any of the variances that seem to be constantly popping up with these areas. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's something that maybe Sarah Linda had incorporated in there. Sorry. Yeah, I can see it, but I'll I'll share what I earlier. Do we need to have a separate meeting to discuss something like that, or are we? I think that you could. I think meeting? you. I think you could do it at a meeting if you circulated it prior and gave everyone a chance to take a good look. I think so too. I think that would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's put that on our next agenda then, Kimberly. We can put that in our new business for the next agenda. Yeah, what, what the joint meeting that happened with the ordinance was that just Sarah Linda or was anybody else there for that one? Gary, were you at it for the ordinance committee? Okay. No, no, I, I'm not unaware of it. Justin, it didn't go to order. Do you mean? It hasn't, it hasn't gone there. Yeah, yet. I thought there was yeah, like a joint discussion. Okay, yeah. I, I just think there's like a precursor meeting or something. Sorry, I'm just trying to rack my memory of if it happened or just something that was planned. The good thing about or the beauty about ordinance is that there's representative, I mean, planning board, zoning board, town board. It's a really good committee to kind of gauge 
and get opinions about things like this. I really, I love that committee. Me too. They really do talk about things in depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, you can talk about driveways for an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can. <laughs> there is streets. <laughs> Sidewalks, that's all sorts of stuff. So. Okay, cool. All right, so um, are we done with that? Any further comments or questions or concerns on that? I think it would probably behoove all of us in light of this review and also what we're talking about now, we should all drive down there and just drive down so we know what we're talking about for Sandy Beach and for Tishiana and all of them. Um, just take a peek at it and see how they work. It does feel not like a road sometimes when you're down there on those. So, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so if we're if we're good, done with that for now, um, we'll go on move on to old business um, town newsletter. Um, did, Pat, did you want to say anything? Or? Well, I I did an article on rain gardens for May, mm -hmm. and now in this coming up month, anyone have anything that they are interested in I, writing about, perhaps, or getting another? Uh, I think we might want I was thinking maybe we want to share something about um, lake friendly lawn care again, it might be a good time for that again I don't know the last time we've shared that. But we could also do an article on pervious pavement. <laughs> 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 recommendation for people. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, do people have other ideas I'm open to anything. But... Well, the Daily Mass had uh, spotted lantern flies on on offer for the headline today. We were talking about. However, that. they did not mention that uh, that the Alanthus trees are the hosts, and removing those would be recommended. Yeah, yeah, maybe that would be we ought to put that in our newsletter yeah. since we yeah. harbor those things. And you got to be really careful with the way you take care of oh them. you just cut them down yeah and, and then you've got a million of them yeah right you get their uh stinker yeah huh. yes did you say there were some in local some of local, our cemeteries yes sand hill cemetery sand hill is rife with mm -hmm. Atlantis trees it, it's the west side is overwhelmed with Atlantis mm -hmm. trees i trying to get hold of somebody at the DEC to ask about what their philosophy is regarding Atlantis and mm -hmm. whether you should just eradicate all of them or the fact that they do attract the spotted lantern flies you want to keep a few of them is, <laughs> kind of bring them all into one area um, and I don't know if they have a, a policy I don't think they do I think they are terrified of the things mm -hmm. um they're not particularly susceptible to insecticides, to tell you the truth. And if you try to, well, <laughs> really about all that works is a good old stomp, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. They are yeah. they're a tough bug. The guy who really... did the aerial spraying around here, this Chuck Weber, said that there's really no nothing that they no, found. No, there's uh, nothing that they found that will like the... do it. And, yeah. you know, the truth is that sand hill does have a remarkable number of these trees it is in a residential area but it is across the road from ag land mm -hmm. and there are you know numerous homesteads with trees that could be damaged by them mm -hmm. it's just and of course the things can fly so it's not like they are going to stay put mm -hmm. it's just that they do like those as a host tree mm -hmm. They will lay eggs on other trees mm -hmm. too, obviously, but. Um, but if they're not chewing on the uh, tree of heavens, they go after the, the grape. They, oh, <laughs> they, they have a really sharp, uh, long, uh, tough proboscis that they get into the cambium, the living part mm -hmm. of the trees or the grapevines, and it kills the whole grapevine awesome. and which is you know there was just miles of dead uh, vineyards and, 
at UC in Pennsylvania. Right. And it's, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, and they like apple trees, any kind of fruit tree. Yeah. I wish they'd go after a buckthorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you, My um, you struggle with buckthorn? Do you want me to share at the next town board meeting that we might want to address the Atlantis trees in Sandhill? Well, yes, I have reported them from the tree committee before, but yes, okay. that would be uh, that would be good. Uh, actually, on Saturday, if you want a pre tree committee report. The committee is touring the cemeteries. Oh, yes. yes, the, the town has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cemeteries oh. for which we are responsible. And Sand Hill is one of them. So we will be looking at them and reporting on the state thereof, which I think is going to be pretty much unchanged since last year. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen, you know, the cemetery crawl uh, well it is yes and um uh, leaf Herr Giesel is going to go with us he is um, interested in the cemetery situation mm -hmm. and truly if any of you would like to go besides eric and myself we were meeting at outhouse park at uh let's see 9 a.m yes and we will go and uh, tour when all are you of doing the cemeteries. This? Saturday. Okay. I'll Saturday? email Leaf again, but he was on board and pretty excited about it. And that way we Good. can kind of double dip a little bit. Yes. Well, I think his perspective will be interesting too. You know, we are looking at the trees primarily and trying to make sure they're not endangering tombstones because many of them are uh, are less than optimal shape. Hmm. That um, I did have a question. I saw um, we have Leaf listed as a member of this, as a board member of the ECB. Is he still a board member of the ECB? I haven't seen him for a while. Because I believe we're supposed to have seven members, and Leaf would make us have eight. I believe. I don't think he's a member. I think he's like ex officio. Okay. I believe, but I would have to check on that. Yeah, I, I, I think that. I Jared think. had suggested that the town historian be a member. That might be in the um, membership update that's been pending. Right, and that membership update is on the radar for ordinance. Okay, cool. As long as I'm got a handle on everything, <laughs> just making sure. Um, okay, so then. I think we can move. Do we know what we're doing? Do we need to discuss further about the newsletter? Do we know what we want to do then for next month? Do you want me to do That's something about there. spotted lantern flies and, and uh, Atlantis trees? Whatever everybody that. thinks. That sounds that fine to me. What a okay. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and honestly, I will end it with good luck with that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I would start your article with the comment that the spotted lantern flies will kill grapevines and will kill or apple trees. trees. They have or been because that verified as being present in Yates County. Oh no, Gee. yeah, mm -hmm. and there have been some dead adult ones found mm -hmm. in Ontario County, but it's hard to tell whether they came dead mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. something or if you know it's yeah. it's um yeah. something to watch and, and mm -hmm. unlike uh, uh, a spongy moth there's not a, a, a there's a really not much that will hit it no uh, there's uh, not no mm -hmm. okay so i think that makes sense for, for okay. next one. and the town hall display case you just switched it out pretty much in yeah i did i could yeah. spring flowers in it if anyone else has something that they'd like to put up, that would be okay too. You, it doesn't have to be my bailiwick, you know. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that could go with there. It's just a... Any, anybody else want to take on a summer one at all? Or? Can't think of anything. <laughs> there might be a good one well, for your lawn. Yes. Yeah. That one does get 
observed by anybody coming into the town hall pretty well. So it could be a good plug, didn't you say that uh, we're working on trail stuff right now, um, like mapping out and getting Ananda new trail stuff and flyers and everything? And we could put copies of, if it's okay, with the rest of with Sarah Linda and other people working on it, we, we could you know highlight that. Mm -hmm. It's still a work in process, progress, mm -hmm. but um, Sherry over at Ontario County Historical Society does the mapping and she's done a fantastic job. Mm. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's almost to its final stage. Oh, she I'm glad to hear that. Job. And then oh. that actually is a great idea. Mm -hmm. For yeah, some time, it would be nice to display it. In the next it. couple months when maybe it's finished a little bit yeah, more, and that's absolutely. the perfect time for people to go out yeah. and do the trails and everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You could also toss that um, that QR code for the biodiversity scavenger hunt thing mm -hmm. in there. You know what I mean? Like that with on the trail, along this the is, trails. Oh, Sarah Linda sent this. This is what one of the um, kiosk signs will look like. Oh, nice. We were just look, going over it today at the, the history team meeting this morning. Mm -hmm. Wonderful stuff. <laughs> Except for that summer one is more like a May. <laughs> I'd say there's a lot less water in that creek in the yeah. summertime. Well, <laughs> it's taken uh, a little scan the QR block and go to different. Beautiful. Time. Did you do that? Oh, okay. I did not. No. Well, it's gorgeous. That's great. That's beautiful. Very nicely done. There'll be a nice uh, 11 by 17 paper map and, and they're, they're colors. So there'll be expensive to print. We're not quite sure how many we can make or what one can make. And, um, you know, they should be available too. But oh, look at that. That's, that's great. great. Yeah. 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 Wow, so that. Is there ever a way to, have you ever looked on, if you look on Google Maps and you look at um, Bristol Mountain, they have the Bristol Mountain um, courses on Google Maps. Like mm -hmm. you can actually see them as a different color line on Google Maps. And I always wonder if there's a way to somehow implant trails so that they would show up on a map. If you go to some of the larger parks, yeah. um, let's see, I think Highland Park has that. Here, I'll show you real quick. Yeah, I mean, that I would love, because I mean, when I'm going somewhere, that's what so, I'm using. But like, so if you look at Bristol Mountain, for example, it looks like this. Well, of course, now it turned, but it looks like hey, everybody this. Needs to drop off. Sorry. Thank I'll you, Justin. It looks like this on on mm -hmm. Google Maps. So you can actually see, oh, here's the, you know, here's that run or there's that run or whatever it may be. Yeah. Oh, um, like all trails. It's a yeah, similar it's it's yeah. Pull up all trails. Let's see what they have around it. See, there's some green here, so obviously they have some of their trails marked. Yeah. So that's Highland Park and Rochester. So yeah. I know there's a way to do it. Well, but even like, look, I mean, I guess that's a road inside of Mount Home Cemetery. Those are the little drives there, I guess. But, you know, it'd be nice to have something that was, yeah. See, so so you've got the dotted see, lines and stuff, so. Yeah, you've got different. And I don't know how we get that into Google Maps, but. I'll call Mr. Google. Mr. Google. Well, the last time I asked about this when I was on the Parks Committee, we is when we kind of found out that we didn't actually own the Google site for Onanda Park. It was someone else that opened it, and we had to reacquire kind of ownership of of changes to Onanda. So, so I we do have that now. <laughs> so. Maybe was it Sherry? I forget her last name. Norton. Norton, the one that she might have an idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that might be. Just a thought. So that's who I would ask. Good idea. So before we get too far off track, we'll go um, back into the new business section here about the tree labels. And I think at some point everybody's probably seen this note that we sent out about the tree signage that Sarah Linda had asked the town to consider purchasing and installing embossed metal arboretum style tree tags for the Miller Park trees. Um, she had said lots of lots of techniques and materials ranging from a dollar to $10 in their costs. Um, 
And there's, uh, did everyone at some point see this email from Sarah and Linda about this? Mm -hmm. I think. I did not. No. no. So where are they planning on putting the like placards and stuff? On the tree. Like on the tree. Usually, right I think tree. hanging them right on the tree. So oh, not just like a little sign. In front no, of not the little sign things. More like little hangers on the tree. I think so. Mm -hmm. Spikes of I'm not, I was going to say, <laughs> not too sounds... happy about piercing the work on a young tree. That's... I don't think they're talking about piercing. I think hanging off of the tree. I don't know. Okay. But well, so like, here's what she said. My suggestion is a tag instead of purchasing and installing embossed metal arboretum style tree tags. There are a lot of options. Tree tags or tree labels lead a variety of sizes, materials, and mounting techniques. The ones at Cornell Plantations, Highland Park Arboretum, and Duran Eastman Arboretum all use zinc or aluminum blank with a botanical name and common name stamped on a three inch by five inch size, uh, typically wired to a branch low enough to be visible from the ground. Okay. No. Um, mm -hmm. Though often they are not easily to find when a tree or shrub, shrub becomes large. In some cases, they're mounted to the trunk, but there's a danger as the tree grows, the label will rise to a height where it's unreadable. Pros and cons of various mounting techniques and the various available materials, metal, zinc, and plastics. Ground mounted plaques are another option, although I suspect the longevity for ground mounted plaques would be less than tree mounted tags. Um, you can also mount small QR codes in a conspicuous spot on the tree, allowing the person with a smartphone to pick, quickly pick up the information. So. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on whether they're helpful, needed? I mean, just not necessarily the specifics of it at this point, but whether you would want to see them there, if they would be a useful thing to have. Who would work on like upkeep? So like if you wire it to a tree branch and stuff, I mean, it's not immediately going to become a problem, mm -hmm. but like 10, 20, 10, 20 years, yeah, yeah. it's, it's it going to cut off stuff yes, like that tree yeah. branch. Yes, um, it'll get embedded, yeah. And there is a cost. Mm -hmm. the, the, yes. I mean, the metal ones are going to be more durable and longer lasting. But, but they'll have to be replaced, yeah. But they'll also be more expensive mm -hmm. than obviously mm -hmm. plastic. So, do we currently have any unusual trees at Miller Park? Not really, no. Okay. They are native trees and um, they are not, there's nothing exotic mm -hmm. <laughs> unless you. Count River Birch is exotic. Yeah. It's not, you know, the actually that is the plan is that they would all be native mm -hmm. species. Yeah. And that, oh, you know, that um, was really what the main aim of for it was. <coughs> I, I would suggest that you refer this to the tree committee. So Dennis and Dan Marion and Eric and I and whoever can take a look and see what what we think. Okay. Would that be all satisfactory? We're That's supposed to be mm -hmm. Saturday anyway. So you if you don't mind letting us uh, discuss it a bit. And, and, um, is, is Dan Marion a formal consultant for the town? <clears throat> like a paid consultant? He should be. He's, he, he should be. He's an expert. No, yeah. he's just part of the tree. I'm committee. sure I have But he's very, oh, you know, talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I learned something from him every time we go out. I really enjoy the excursions. His expertise is yeah. so valuable. Yeah. Very good at, at, at explaining yeah. and teaching. Very patient. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that something? Should be pursue. I, I don't know if he'd be interested in being a, and uh, being the consultant. Being a, a consultant, but he's which Dan are you talking about? Young Marion, young, younger. younger. Yeah, <laughs> I believe his father is, is uh, not active very much, but I know Dan is quite busy with their yes. business yeah. too. He so busy yeah. keeping my trees alive. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's he's really excellent to have with the tree committee he's just so good yeah, very, very good teacher yes yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely mm -hmm. he did there are some online um things <laughs> i want to say plants map and plants map and things like that 
where you can make maps of specific plants and things. Mm -hmm. So that might be a, a good first step for some sort of activity is yeah. create that. And you always can have a sign maybe at like the trailhead or something. Yes, well, there are signs there are about signs, yeah. uh, different plants, flowers, birds, etc., cetera, yeah. etc. Cetera, anyway, mm -hmm. and you know, we could make something in keeping with that. We had a, uh, some of these case. will have <coughs> yeah. maps, like yeah. an app, yeah. and, right? And mm -hmm. will show different mm -hmm. stops and stuff. Well, I so. will. I would like to know what Dan would recommend yeah. as far as labels and mm -hmm. you know. well is. and yeah and also being that she's talking about miller park i think this also behooves some consideration from the parks committee as well mm -hmm. um because it, it you know it right. it helps create what kind of atmosphere are we looking for in the park you know and and it might be in keeping with that it might not be in keeping with that mm -hmm. um but it, i think it behooves both the parks and the Mm -hmm. and the tree team to discuss it as well so i think so too it's yeah. good okay so and i will i'll forward this to everyone on this committee or i'll probably give it to kimberly to do that so that she's got because she, she's better at doing that than me <laughs> so, um so member requests before we get into well i i have some new business items so one of them was um, there had been some discussion that we had all been talking about how we can do training on site visits and things like that. And I think there was some confusion there. I actually, um, and I, is Shauna still on? Yes, yeah. she is. Um, Shauna and everyone, I actually spoke, I spoke to um, Chris Nadler, who is our town attorney regarding quorums, et cetera. And he had indicated if two people are on a site visit, they can discuss whatever they wish to regarding the property. Anytime that it is more than two in a quorum based board is where you run into a problem, but two people is always fine, um, according to our town attorney and that's New York state law so. Okay, um, great. So we, um, we can easily have if we can have some of the more um, experienced members, maybe. For the next time we have a review, we, I would love it if, if when we put those out there, if an experienced member can raise their hand and say, hey, I want to go, and then one of the rest of us can say, okay, I'll go with them, or I'll go to Alaska, or whatever. But just as long as we don't have more than one member there, or more than two members, so as, if up to two is fine, more than two needs to be discussed here, so. Okay. so. Oh, that's great, and if we mentioned um, inviting Sarah Linda in to, to kind of go yeah. through her. Yeah, yeah. You know, her the site visits are, are important. Uh, to kind of get the, the lay of the land, literally, mm -hmm. and, and seeing uh, what vegetation might be disturbed, et cetera. But going over the project before you hike out uh, is, is a part that I, you know, I need more expertise in looking at site plans and looking at uh, where there might be concerns, uh, accessing some of the different maps and whatnot. Um, and I thought that, that could almost be done as a, a virtual training session mm -hmm. with uh, Justin or, or Sarah Linda. Kind of going through the process pulling up these different plans mm -hmm. um, i don't know I mean, well and i in talking to sarah linda too about we've been keep talking about a checklist and what have you she had indicated that there they was at one point there was time to do that they were talking about making checklists before mm -hmm. um but that it essentially check checklist isn't really what ended up working and being useful for the committee that instead the reviewer would produce a draft narrative report um, was more helpful than a checklist and that they were um, look, she said she had four sections in her referral reviews a summary of key points environmental concerns additional comments from the ecb and recommendations which i think is pretty much what we already have yeah, yeah, always that's, that's on our our reviews so mm -hmm. so i think if we're bringing that along with us and we're walk someone's walking the land and making you know oh there's a stream in you know on this property or this is within the uh the paddleford brook greenway <coughs> or why is there impervious surface here when there's not supposed to be whatever it may be um 
but that I think doing that once or twice with someone else on the committee is always going to be really helpful to a new person going forward and knowing how to review so so not not having kind of a didactics with sarah linda or justin she had indicated that them. was not necessarily in the past having a checklist in particular she was saying was not necessarily useful so well are, are you guys well, comfortable looking at these site plans and interpreting them and um I mean, you. Uh, yeah, so I've I'm done a lot of those. But I was here. thinking, you know, <clears throat> it might. There is a checklist in the plans that that the engineering firm. Okay. Did, and I, I think I, that I, might be helpful to look at, so you know, you know, not necessarily to go through all of it, but to understand what it is that you are looking at, yeah. you know. Uh, what constitutes, you know, a steep slope is right. is not a matter of judgment. It's a matter of what the well, contour yeah. lines yeah, say, exactly. and yeah, uh, you know, right. it. But it does it does give you an idea of what you might be looking mm -hmm. at. I wouldn't disregard yeah. the checklist thing. It's mm -hmm. just yeah. that you don't want to have to leaf through it mm -hmm. every time, mm -hmm. you know. But it's it's a great guide yeah, as right. far as Shauna, yeah. Shauna, what does what does the planning board what, what are they looking for from us i guess because you know I've, I've written up a few of these and i you know they don't they don't get much comments from the planning board i don't, <laughs> I don't know if they look at it perhaps they do but. well your review was very important to the planning board i can tell you that what i'm thinking is the nri we haven't done a whole lot with it the natural resource inventory checklist and I love that document. I think it's invaluable. And I'm thinking that maybe when we send this over from development to the ECB, that we send the NRI checklist with it or that that accompanies when you go out because that flags everything mm, that you possibly want to look at. Yeah. It's over I agree. Easy. I think the checklist is valuable. Right. You mm -hmm. may not want to go through when you report and say, you know, <laughs> it's not the product. It's no, mm -hmm. it, but it is a great working document, and it reminds you of what you are looking at. And I think that Gary be, sent me two very yeah. good sources, um, but it's a lot of reading, a lot of retention. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it becomes easier as you get do a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But to but to get you know to get more familiar with that in tandem mm -hmm. with a good a thorough checklist to mm -hmm. train you know to train mm -hmm. ourselves what am I looking mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. and just practice practice practice. But then the write ups absolutely the narrative the narrative format is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, very very thorough. Uh -huh. Well, and I don't know, Shauna. I mean, I I think a lot of people are looking for some aspect of training here, and and Shauna, I don't know. If, at a, future, at a future ECB, would you feel comfortable with just showing a basic how to read these plans, which section is the most important to look at? Absolutely. I can definitely. I was, I think that would be great. I can yeah. do that. Good. That we can add that. But it's like next month's gonna be busy. Maybe. Good thing you're in Alaska. <laughs> Wait, I right. Does it say here? It says the next meeting's June 2nd, not 6th. That's we're it's a separate so, meeting. So yeah. she's talking oh, about a, 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 okay. another so meeting. That's the ECB. It's yeah, so that's okay. so the six is something else. Group meeting. Yeah, that's a group Ireland meeting. Group. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So you can plan your trip on the, the fifth. Okay. <laughs> just, just I will be here for the second. Okay. Not the good. Not the okay, second. good. But yeah, so. just a workshop. Um yeah, yes. training mm -hmm. session would be wonderful. That would be, I think, helpful for all of us. If you feel comfortable kind of writing that. And then I will draw all of your attention again to, you know, I know uh, several of us were in the, the training we had here in the town, the municipal boot camp training, um, but we're all required to get training every year, mm -hmm. a, extra training in the beginning, but a, I'm not, what is it? How many hours is it showing up? Four, four, four yeah, per so. year. So we should all be looking at all of these training opportunities that are listed on here. They're there for a reason so that we can all take them, except for me. I don't have to do anything. Which I don't think is yeah. particularly correct. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
but I, I mean, I think I learn a lot from the trainings when I go to them too. And some are obviously more geared towards what's needed for ECB and some are, some are less. So, um, but, uh, you know, I would say, don't forget about those trainings as well too. Um, there was something else I wanted to bring up. Shana, how much do new members? I think they have a different amount. Yes, yeah, they do. New members need 12 hours. Busy. Year. She's been busy. I'll ask it counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> you send us a report about your trip. We'll count there that. You go. I can yeah. write. If you want me to write you a report, I can write you guys a report. Shana, when is the class starting? The new year, the calendar year. What was that, Eric? When does the clock on that start? The new calendar year. Yeah, the new, calendar, the new calendar year. Well, if you're a new member, I mean, if you, I think we could be flexible with that, you know, in terms of, you know, you started in October and then, you know, you need 12 hours by the end of that year. Okay. Uh, but any treat, if you did, say you did 12 last year and this year you've already done seven, it rolls into the next year. So that's a good thing. And you all should have gotten a note from Shauna about how many hours you got from the municipal boot camp already. So, yeah. so We're already on our way. yes. Mm -hmm. So Shauna, does a, a, an academic course, a college course count? <laughs> Are you the professor? Does a, an academic course, a college course count? I took a, an undergraduate course on ecology at FLCC in the fall semester, and it was it was wonderful. It was a great introduction mm. to so much of what is discussed here. Um, does that count as formal training? It should. I would say yes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I would so think I'll so. Give you documentation yeah. mm -hmm. for the next five years, probably. So you're good for, yeah, the end of, till the end of time. <laughs> <laughs> College course. Uh, <laughs> so um, I did I have also a note life. in here kind of carried over from last month. We had brought up when you weren't here last month, Shauna, um, is, I think it was you who was saying, we were talking about, do we need to come up with a plan for new site recommendations, um, such as uh, encouraging geothermal or things like that? Right, so that's, right. We had brought that up last time, and I don't know if we wanted to discuss that a little further tonight and see if there's something we want to do yeah, with that. So. It's kind of uh, in the context of the a new, a new subdivision being yeah. developed, and mm -hmm. you know this this move the state mm -hmm. has towards electrification, and yeah. whether it's something that should be mm -hmm. encouraged. Uh, I'm not that sure how you would do that. Or yeah, I, I think we were we were kind of looking, Sean, if you had any thoughts on on. Um, how something could be codified that in you know doesn't require but encourages um more eco-friendly eco forms of energy i guess yeah. so, a lot of that is policy you know it would be we would or a plan that the town board would adopt and and again it's not codified in that it's not a requirement but it's highly recommended like the paddle for Paddlebrook Greenway mm -hmm. plan. And, and all a lot of the plans we have, they, you know, they're high, we highly recommend that you, you know, take this into consideration or this is prime ag land. We we want it protected. And, I mean, and that's, you know, I don't mean to not have an answer, but you know, that's something that we struggle with is how to get these things that are so important as, you know, to be um not only a priority, but to be required. I'm not sure how we do that, but. Um, so question, you can kind of trade land, so to speak, or, you know, like we were just talking about with the, the plan where they were supposed to remove asphalt in order to get an addition. Is there a point structure or something where if you're installing geothermal or solar or what have you, is there some something where that could offset something else? Yeah, um, or, carbon credits or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind mm -hmm. of, right. yeah, I believe that, you know, that's, I think we need to look into that. I think, uh, I think that's really important. And maybe, you know, we have a new conservation easement team starting everyone, just so you know. Um, and we'll be looking, I know Sarah Reynolds is, is spearheading that, but 
looking at things like land banking and credits and that kind of thing. I know it's not specifically, you know, environmental uh, site specific, but it's, it's, you know, maybe that's something we start with first is, you know, the land banks and, and the wetland banks and those kind of things. Um, well, we could probably, that, we could probably ask MRB too, if there's something that's already structured in, you know, I don't know, a grant application or something that's indicating if you have a policy that encourages geothermal or, or something like that, mm -hmm. you can get so-and-so many more points towards XYZ grant application. That seems to be the way it usually works. <laughs> 20 square feet of asphalt for every yeah. four solar panels. Yeah, that's not even that, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Like, well, like um, one site, the Tishner site, they're putting in a, a green roof. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's account for something. We have nothing in our code right now that gives them credit, but mm. but it should. They yeah. should be some sort of credit for that. Right. Yes. Or ephemeral pools. That's mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a great wildlife thing. <laughs> that so, on as I just have ephemeral pools in my yard right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have plenty of them in my woods right now, but they will be gone soon. Yes. They're hatching frogs and toads at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how do we make this happen, Shauna? Do you want me to follow up with someone or you want to take a lead on this or what do we want to do? Let's, how about you and I talk, Adeline? <laughs> okay. The best way. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Back to agenda, all my wonderful notes. Okay, so I think we got we got through the labels. We got through the, did we talk about CAC? Yeah, we pretty much did. Mm -hmm. Local history team, anybody have any report from that or? I know we met today and we, um, right. we looked at a number of, of small points of interest we want to pursue, um, but don't, much of the, most of the time we spent talking about an unknown park and a kiosk. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, where things stand now, and, and we're pretty excited about that. Good. And that gets into what the tree team yes. is doing. Too, so <laughs> yes. I, uh, we're dovetailing everybody. Yes, yes. <laughs> Teamwork makes the tree work. There you go. Yeah. Did you have anything else from the tree board, or just what uh, you yes, if, about the if you board. would like? We did walk the uplands at Onanda Park as well as the lakeside. There are numerous trees that need to be removed. There, mm -hmm. On the lakeside, there are two dead uh, black locust trees in the stream side, one of which is totally rootless and is hung up in another tree, but it is hanging over the restroom oh, <laughs> building. Oh. That's and dangerous. threatening its roof. Yes. In the upland part, there are numerous dead trees near the trail, mm -hmm. including some that are broken over and are hanging over the trail and you have to pass under them, which is inherently dangerous and mm -hmm. uh, quite a liability. Yes, yes. It uh yeah, you just wrote up a, a, a wonderful report. <laughs> Um, the next day, I, I spoke with Dennis, and I spoke with uh, Lindsay, and I spoke with um, Jared at the at the tree, the tree plantings last oh, weekend, yes. and yeah. really, really kind of gently pushed all of them to look at these. Good. And I think they are they are liability risks and material mm, they hazards are. at Onanda. Um, yes. I went out myself on a Sunday and marked with orange tape. I ran out of tape. Um, I, I marked good. the trees that you know we feel pose yes. a, a real safety risk. Mm -hmm. um, and then I marked another color of trees that are just ought to be removed from the trail area itself just because they're they're dead and not terribly yes. attractive. Yes. Um, and again, this dovetails with the kiosk. If we're, we're we're kind of pushing, promoting that part, <laughs> you know, I'll have to be honest. The north side, the north trails, the trails to the north side of the park are not healthy. Mm -hmm. They're they've they've not been managed, in my opinion, well. Mm -hmm. There's a um, yeah. buckthorn, there's multiflora rose that are taking over huge swaths of the forest floor. Grapevines are 
50, 60 feet up and have. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I, I, I you know, Lindsay said she was thinking of a work party, you know, getting some mm -hmm. kind of volunteer, and I said, please do this, do this, do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there it, are. It needs to be done. Um, oriented better <clears throat> suite in in that same mess. It is a mess yeah. and it is dangerous. One of the things that should happen, which is kind of not the tree committee's yeah. concern, except <clears throat> that uh, it, there's no mulch on the trail. And the mulch not only protects people's feet, it protects the roots of the trees. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be remulched. Yeah. And I know the town has mulch. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you mean? It, it, <laughs> needs, it, it needs to be. Well, and I, it's those trails need it. Because a few years ago, we had the town, the town highway staff was maintaining the, the trails, the parks, the yes. grounds. And now we hire landscapers to do that. So I don't know if things have been kind of lost in the shuffle in that translation well, there. But it it needs to be yeah. requested and made sure that it happens because mm -hmm. it is it will kill trees. Anytime and it's next are, to the you know, if they are next yeah. to the trail, then you are getting a hazard. And if we're encouraging more use of the trails mm -hmm. and offering it to our public, we need to make sure it's safe right. it's yeah. or as a, safe as it can be. It's, it's, it's just it's not a matter of it's simply not an attractive stretch. It's a bio, it's a you know. It, in terms of um, species diversity, it's a very rich side of the trail, yeah. this mm -hmm. north side. Um, it, it's almost too rich. It's overgrown. Yeah. Um, the other <laughs> thing, I'll, I've also walked the Barnes Road Trail mm -hmm. and marked that. Um, yeah. And I Good. have one more trip up to do the upper loop, but that's healthier. Uh, yeah. The higher elevation mm -hmm. loops, I'm, yeah. I'm by and large, are healthier, so, but I still have to mark those. The north side that you're talking about, is that like near that? Should we call it a gazebo or whatever we want to call that structure that's over there? Is that what no, you're talking this, about? That? Oh, north. I'm thinking that's south. Yeah, north. yeah that's, you mean the very first part where you come in right yes. from, the, from the parking lot? Right, okay. right. And, Which and is probably the heaviest used area. Too, yes, so. it is. The lower middle loop, that northern mm -hmm. crest mm -hmm. as you look across to the ravine and the yeah. private property. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, you're going to have you're going to have these things happen. It, it is a, a successional forest. Yeah, and you, yeah. you, can, you, can, you can see some things are out, out competing others, and you're mm -hmm. getting those die offs, you're getting the deadfall. But you know, my concern is it can't be over literally, it cannot over be literally, literally over. hanging over people's heads. Yes, if there were 20 of me and sharp chainsaws, I'd do it myself. Yes. <laughs> I you know, spoke to Jack Winter too, who is a part time caretaker, and he's aware of it, but he said by himself, he'd rather not. Yes. Take mm -hmm. those so it's the responsibility of the, the landscaping company that we have. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't, mm -hmm. I mean, the landscaping company pretty much just mows as yeah. far as I'm aware. So, uh, they're, they're well, just that's, mowing. that's not, I would think it would fall to our highway department at that point. Yeah, so. it's, it's not being sufficient. The other thing about the mulch is that if there are, are trails that are not on our property that people yes, go know, off yeah. on and if the, our trails were mulched it would tend to keep people uh, on the proper trails mm -hmm. and that would probably improve our relationship with our neighbors over there. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't hurt <laughs> so i can bring up some of this at the town board meeting but you know what would be greatly helpful to me is if one of you two have actually been there and done this review at the next town board meeting, if even privilege of the floor, or they might not have done the agenda yet. I'm not sure if there's just a quick little presentation where you ask that question and say, who is, who's in charge of managing the forest? Who's in charge of managing the mulching? Um, we know that the town contracts with landscapers and also with, you know, highway staff. So whatever it may be we're concerned about liability etc and so forth mm -hmm. um but that would be helpful to me if um if somebody was reported there's always a spot on the agenda for a report from those committees anyway yes, so sir. well that would okay. be helpful to me okay good okay. Uh, the agenda isn't finished they our deadline is tomorrow at noon yeah just up okay. by but i think they could probably sean they could just do that in one of those reports from the committee section right 
Absolutely, because uh, Jared always gives the committee time to report if they want to. I mean, that's every every single town board agenda has an opportunity for reports yep. from the committees, and we rarely get anyone in there. And when you've got yeah. something important to say like this, please. <laughs> Live um, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. and that's that's that. I mean, there are people have different things that are important to them and different priorities on the town board, but not killing people walking on our trails, I think, is important to all of us. <laughs> I think that's a very important thing to everyone on that as I, as I was putting, you know, taping the trees, I, you know, I've spent several hours um, that day and uh, with my sainted wife. Um, but just, just to watch the, the young families come mm -hmm. up and stop and look at the tree and they look at each other and they look at the tree and they look at the kids and <laughs> dad goes and, and mom goes, <laughs> <laughs> mom walks onto the private property next door to go around the tree. Well, I'm just taking a look. Yeah, I'm just taking a Yes. So they all have orange tape on them now, so people are more aware of their. Okay, good to know. That's well, uh, yeah, the, the ones that really should be. Should taking be, care of things that have to come down. Have to come I mean, down I, I don't yeah. run wild yeah. through the woods with tape, but yeah. only those that are, you know, a, a true hazard are, are indicated. And I just have that upper loop to go. I'll send a note to, to Lindsay too. And That's ask what I was going to suggest. Yeah. That might be yeah. a good way to start is to yeah. contact Lindsay. Mm -hmm. The other things that the pre committee are, are um, involved with is we're trying to come up with this heritage tree definition and promote that as an awareness thing through the town. Mm -hmm. The town actually owns some that are mm -hmm. probably going to be designated as heritage trees. Heritage um, tree being what age? Then? Uh, that's one of the things we're deciding is okay. what the criteria will be. Probably height, species, age, um, you know, aesthetics, <laughs> um, unusual things. For instance, the big spruce at Onanda yeah. Lakeside is enormous mm -hmm. and probably 150 or so, or maybe more years old, maybe 170, and probably was planted as a lightning rod for the original <laughs> farmhouse. Wow. Yes, it is a magnificent specimen. And uh, you know, that's one of ours. There's a, a couple of trees, you know, some of the trees in the cemeteries are quite remarkable. And we want to have people able to nominate their tree if they think they have something wonderful and maybe give them a certificate, you know, which is. <laughs> you know, and you might want to put some teeth in that too. I, it makes me think of what Kimberly sent about mm -hmm. um, the cutting down of trees that was part of the part of Toronto's uh, plan. Mm -hmm. You might want to put some teeth in there that if there is someone's plan to remove a heritage tree, it needs approval. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, the, the people who had the big cottonwood that the eagle was nesting in mm. and wanted to remove it. Oh, where was yeah. that? It was like Boulevard? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. They oh, could really? not because of it. It was an eagle nesting in it. Yeah, and they they were prevented, but they would certainly have. Uh, yeah, that was a plan. That was quite, quite a plan on it. Yeah. Right. That happen, the then? other yeah, thing that we're working years. on yeah. is a list 20. of recommended trees for mm -hmm. developers and for construction. You know, things that would uh, grow here and yeah. and different, different species. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, natives, natives. Preferably natives. And, and I would share that also with HOA, <coughs> not just developers, um, because mm -hmm. especially when, you know, I think of myself when we build our house and you don't, there's no one you consult with on what to plant in your yard other than, you know, your landscaper who may or may not have any knowledge of how it's going yes. to work. Right. Yes, At which well, point you begin paying Dan Marion $800 a year to keep the trees alive in your yard. So anyway. <laughs> Well, you have your rest, rest at least. <laughs> okay. Um, Edith, if you need help turning that into a flyer, let me know. Okay. Thank you, dear. Okay. Do we have anything else on the tree board? No. So Aren't just, you amazed? I shut up. No, no that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all great stuff to say. Yes. So. <laughs>
Okay, so I think we're kind of coming towards the end here then. We've got, I will remind everybody again, get your training in, your four hours for continuing it and 12 for your initial and all those wonderful training initiatives on there. Um, does anybody have anything else that they want to go over? Or, uh, Shauna, does it look like we have a lot of ECB reviews coming up next time, do you think? No, no not at all. Okay. So then that'll be a good time to discuss. We can have like little Shauna boot camp <laughs> on how, how to review. Plan. Great, that's a good name for it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, I think that'd be beneficial to everybody. Um, the code is training. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and then, um, I mean, hopefully, I, you know, we can figure out a better answer on what we can do for the geothermal um, and other issues going forward. We can figure out an answer to um, who's managing the trees and mulching the chairs at Onanda and who's in charge of that and what they can do. Um, and I think, you know, that'll get us plenty to talk about next month. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so does anybody want to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? My motion. There we go. <laughs> and I'm second. <laughs> Great. So we meeting adjourned.